Hey, Stanford's Diane Dimitri with ddstamps.com, and I just started a few minutes early just because um, I want to make sure everything is up and running and everything is going well. And it looks like it might be. I hope so. That's awesome. I had a little struggle today because I was I felt like I hadn't done this for so long, and it hasn't been that long, but it just seemed that way. Um, so anyway, I just want to make sure that everything's up and running. And if you are out there, see, now I start to think, hmm, maybe that's not right. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Never mind. So if you're out there, say hello. Let me know that you're here. It looks like I've got people on. Um, I'm just going to kind of wait a second here. Hi, Darlene from Illinois and Anita. Are you here? Della? That's awesome. That's great. Glad to see that you guys are here. Uh, I haven't heard anything from anybody on YouTube yet, so I'm hoping that there's somebody out there on YouTube. If you are, just say hello in the chat box. If you'd rather meet up with us on Facebook, just go ahead and click down in the description. There's a description box down there, and you can join us on Facebook for the live chat. I will be checking uh, my website and YouTube and Facebook for, for comments. So. If you um, are out there, feel free to comment. There are people that can't see it. They're gonna to have to refresh the screen. And of course I can't tell them to do that, but I'll write it in the box if, if we need to. So please say hello if you're out there. I'm hoping it's working. I'm gonna pull up my screen share. Great. Okay, so I have a new little thing tonight. Let me, uh... oh yeah, Christine from Iowa, Norma from Minnesota, Fr Francie's here, hello, Teresa's here, hi. Julie, good to see you. Julie, the moose are back. Um, I thought you might want to know that. We're very excited. We have several in town right now, so. Ma from New Hampshire, Darlene from, that's awesome, great. Well, it sounds like things are working, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to tell you there's a couple of things I'm trying out new tonight. One of them is this pointer, but I don't think it's, I don't know if it's working. And I won't know until after it's done, but it's a little red pointer that, so if I'm trying to explain something on the screen, it will pop up. So, let's begin. To begin with, I just want a couple of reminders for people um, so that you know what's going on here. If you are down here on YouTube, or even on Facebook, and I think on my, on my website, see that's what happens every time. Here I thought I had it fixed. Okay, so down here in the corner, this little gear button right here. If you're having some lag time in your, um, in the tape, it's lagging a little bit. If you hit that little gear button right down there where that big red arrow is, that will, you can either make it a better um, quality video or less, Lesser video, less quality. That's terrible English. Anyway, um, that just kind of helps you out. And down here in this corner where it says auto refresh comments, if you have that little button checked right there, the comments are going to automatically refresh every 90 seconds. And if you're in the middle of typing something, it's going to refresh in the middle of it and you're gonna lose everything you typed. So my suggestion is, is if you're typing something, just uncheck that box and then you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to type as much as you want. You can always refresh your screen. So uh, that's just a little hint. I've typed in there before and it's all, you know, gone away before I got everything said. So it looks to me, oh good, we got people from Hawaii and Florida, Debbie from Florida and Christine from, Iowa, Tana from Missouri, it looks like, Melody from Ohio, Loreen, Lisa, good, everybody, looks like everybody's getting out, oh, Tanya's here, she's uh, all the way across the other side of the world, that's awesome, oh, Julie, that's funny, every time I see a moose now, I think of you, so, um, just cracks me up, so there, I explained a little bit of that, so if you have questions, please feel free to ask at any time, I did have a few people send me some questions beforehand, which I love that, because it does make it easy for me, oh good, looks like everybody is over on YouTube too, is able to comment, so that's great, um, I love to get questions, that's what makes these 
these workshops great because it is real time and I can answer them right here. I did get a couple people that sent me some questions, which I love that. And uh, looks like I got people over on my website too. So everybody seems to be here and that's great. So we are just going to go right into a couple of questions. Hopefully I can answer them. Um, Brenda asked, I see three cards with three patterns of designer series paper and they all look great, but mine don't work. Can you talk about mixing patterns of DSP and are there no no's like plaids and stripes? You know, honestly, Brenda, anymore, I don't think that there are any no no's. Um, one of the things that I make sure I do, good, it looks like everybody is, can hear me and see me over on my website too, so we're good to go. Um, one of the things that I personally do is I just stick to one particular designer series paper pack. I don't, uh, I try not to go with too many different kinds of designer series papers as far as um, packs of paper that don't necessarily, are not necessarily in the same pack. I like to stick to packs of paper that are in the same pack. And that's why, because I know that for the most part, DSP that's in a pack that goes together is going to coordinate with the other colors in the, in the pack. Does that make sense? Sometimes it's a little off because they'll use really bright colors on one paper on one side and on the other side, it'll be really um, darker colors and it may not look as good, but that's just how I do it, Brenda. Um, as far as no-nos, it's really what it's, you know, we're, we're it's really what looks good to you. Um, so just try some new stuff. It's always fun to try new stuff and see what works and what doesn't. Question number two, can you show how to use Rose Wonder Framelit so you can use the flower and the background cutout on coordinating paper? Hope that makes sense to you. I can't figure out how to do it. Sherry Willis. Sherry, I kind of looked around today. I didn't have time to do something, but I found some samples of of things that other people had done. And I thought I, we could talk about some of these things. Um, like this one up here is just the cutout. And then you can see where they, they trimmed it out of this piece of Whisper White. So I would take a piece of Whisper White and cut it, you know, maybe a quarter to an eighth of an inch um, smaller than, the, than the, um, the gray piece. And then just layer it on top. And then this one here, they layered it onto a piece of designer series paper, and then they actually trimmed out around the edges. Now I've done it where you fill in the different papers, fill in the different papers into the inside of that. But this one was actually lined, laid right on top of it, and then trimmed out with a scissor. And the same, I think, with these. These look like they were laid out on and then trimmed out into layers. So there's several ways you can do that. I hope that answers your questions. I'm going to take a quick look around. I hope we're working. <laughs> be horrible if we weren't, wouldn't it? Okay, so uh, how do you store your framelits and thinlets? I'm also looking for, oh, how do I store my framelits and thinlets? Okay, so I leave them in the little folders, that the plastic folders that they come in, and I line them with a piece of magnetic, and I'll, I'll go pull it out here in a minute when you guys are watching a video, and I'll show you. But it's, it's, it's covers for your heat vents in your house, and they're, and they're magnetic. And I get them at, like, Home Depot or Lowe's or one of the home improvement stores. But I'll show, I'll, I'll grab one when uh, you guys are watching a video and I'll come back and show it to you. But I just trim those out and attach them to the piece of chipboard that comes in with the framelits and thinlets. And then I, I keep them in the same pouch just because it's easy for me. So um, she's also looking for suggestions for how to store your bits and pieces of cardstock and DSP. And I will show you that too, Charlotte. So we're going to go ahead and get started here with the first video. Oh, no, we're not. I just found these, these, uh, these were on my website this past week, and I just thought they were so adorable. I love this cute little animal set, and I couldn't resist showing you those couple of different samples there of things done with that cute little animal set. Okay, now my dog's going to start barking because the neighborhood dogs are barking. We probably have a deer in the yard. So I apologize for that. Um, 
But one of the questions that I had this week was about our different kinds of stamps that Stampin' Up! has. I'm going to show you this video because I think it explains it very well. And then if you guys have further questions when this is done, let me know. No matter your stamping style or stamping needs, we've got you covered with three styles of stamp sets. All of our stamp sets are made from superior materials here in the USA and are beautifully packaged in DVD style cases with stamp images on the spine for quick and easy storage. All of our stamp storage coordinates so no matter what style you choose, it will stack nicely. Our three styles are wood mount, clear mount, and photopolymer stamps. Our wood mount and clear mount stamps are made out of classic red rubber. Red rubber is really easy to stamp with and creates a beautiful, even image. Our wood mount stamps are made using farmed maple and the corners are rounded for comfortable stamping. Stamp sets come die cut and unmounted. When you receive your stamp set, simply pop out the stamp and adhere it to your block. And then take the coordinating image off of the sheet and place it on the back. With wood mount stamps permanently mounted on wood blocks, they are always ready to go. Clear mount stamps also come die cut and come with the image labels. To adhere the stamp image label, simply pop out your stamp, remove the backing from the sticker and the back of the stamp, in place. Clear mount stamps can be positioned on clear acrylic blocks for perfect placement. One set of clear blocks will work for all of your stamps and you can position several images on a single block for more creative combinations. With their slim profile, clear mount stamps offer a great space saving solution and being able to see through the block makes stamping a cinch. Photopolymer stamps offer precision alignment for alphabets, borders, and large text stamps because they're completely see-through, which also makes them great for two-step stamping. Photopolymer stamps are flexible and bendable for even more fun, creative options. And you can arrange multiple stamps on a single block for even more creative options. Something to note when using photopolymer is that you need to use a lighter touch than you would with red rubber stamping. And you may find that stamping on top of a grid paper or a stamping pierce mat would be helpful. No matter which style of stamps you prefer, we know you will love using our high quality stamps and creating beautiful images with our style of artwork. Be sure to contact your local demonstrator today for hands-on stamping experience or visit our website to learn more. Yay. Okay, so there's a couple things about the different kinds of stamps that we have. Um, I did have a few people this week um, purchase what clear stamps or clear mount stamps, and they really thought they were photopolymer. And um, anyway, so that's just a little explanation of the different kinds that we have. Heather says, I never place the images on my clear mount stamps as I find they won't stick to my clear blocks. Any suggestions on how to get them to stay on my clear blocks? Yes, I actually don't put my stickers on either, Heather, um, just because I don't really have to have them on there. But if you do put your stickers on and you're having an issue with them sticking, one of the things you might want to do is wipe down your clear mount stamps and your clear blocks just because the oils on your hands or lotion on your hands gets on them and then it makes them not stick very well. The other thing that I do is I will take some of our two-way glue or our, 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 what I call green glue. It's our mono adhesive, And I will just put a little bit onto this clear stamp and let it dry. And then when it dries, it's, it's like a post-it note, but it's sticky enough and it just sticks right to those clear blocks. And then it, and you just leave the glue, you just leave that glue on there after it's dried and you can, you know, take it off and take it on and use it a lot. I, in fact, I put it on years ago on some of my stamps and I, it's still sticky to this day and still sticks to my clear stamps. If I don't want that on there anymore, I can just um, clean them off with a little bit of cleaner. So yeah, it's, it, that's a it, pretty easy fix. I know some people have a real problem and a lot of it might have to do with just humidity and that kind of stuff. So there's my answer to that one. Um, 
I don't know. Oh, Mar Marley asked if I was going to show some new stuff. Yeah, I think at the end I'm going to show a couple of new. I can show a couple of things. Um, I've got them here. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to come back on screen because I wanted to show you. Somebody asked how I keep my paper scraps. Okay, so these are little drawers that go into. You can see it on that shelf, right? <laughs> Doing this backwards. See that shelf right there? That's what the drawers go into, and that's how I keep my scraps. So I have a drawer for each color family. So these these would be like the bolts. And you can see where I keep, you know, little tiny scraps, and I keep big scraps. So usually what I'll do is if I'm going to make a full uh, card, I'll come into this box and look for these bigger pieces as my bases, and then use the scraps for punching or whatnot. So that's how I store that. And then these are the vent covers that I was telling you about for my framelits and my thinlets. So they're big pieces of magnetic... They're just sheets of mag magnet, so they're pretty large. I cut them down to fit whatever size the folder is that the framelits and thinlets go to, and then I attach it so then they stick to this and it's magnetic. And um, I like it just because it keeps them a little neater and I can see what's in the envelope and they don't all fall to the bottom of the envelope if they're just in there. Does that make sense? So anyway, there's my answer to that one. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please, again, feel free to ask. Hey, Linda, it's fine that you're late. We don't mind. Nice thing about these is that they're video, they're taped so that you can watch them. Um, you can watch whatever you missed. You can watch it later. That's a nice little feature there. Uh, let's see. I think this is okay. Yeah. So this is my first video that I did. Um, just a fun little pocket card. I hope you enjoy this. And if, like I said, please don't, don't hesitate to ask questions. Hi, Stampers. Diane Dimmons here with DDStamps.com. And today I'm going to show you how I did this little pocket card. It's a great little card for any occasion. I actually did it for a birthday, but you could do it for graduation or Father's Day, Mother's Day, any of those events. But what it is, is you can slide a gift card or a little pocket, you know, gift in there, something that would be small enough to fit in there, or even a piece of candy or candy bar. But it's just a fun little gift and card idea. And then in the pocket, I actually cut down this cardstock to four by five and a quarter, so it gave a nice... Um, border around that designer series paper and I stamped it and then you can write on the back of it So I will show you how easy this card is to do One of the things that I'm using today is a designer series paper pack called it's my party designer series paper And I know as stampers we all have lots of 12 by 12 uh, Design papers in our stash. This was actually 12 by 12. I cut it down to eight and a half by 11 and I am going to fold it in half and I am going to come in with my bone folder just to make sure I get a nice crease on that fold. And then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold it the other way. And now when I was teaching Girl Scouts, we would have called this the hot dog fold because it looks like a hot dog one. And the fold going this way looks like a hamburger. So those were how I was um, taught. I taught my Girl Scouts how to know the difference of their folds. I see I didn't quite get that up to the top, but I'm hoping that this card will still go together well. Once you've done that, you're going to decide what you want to be your more dominant color. So for instance, on this one, I want the black candles to be the most dominant color, and that's gonna be whatever happens to show up in this top quadrant up here. And what you're going to do is once you've got that folded, you're going to cut it right down that score line, to meet up with the other score line. Once you've done that, you're gonna take this quadrant and you're gonna fold that right up to the edge where you scored it. And once you've got that done, you're going to come to the other one. And now this corner, I'm only gonna fold it, I'm gonna leave like an inch between the score line and the actual fold line. I do not measure any of this, I just fold. But that's kind of how I do everything. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to take this piece at the top, and I'm going to fold it around to, the, to that piece, and then I'm going to fold this down. And one of the things that you can do at this point is go ahead and add just a little adhesive to keep that folded down, like that. And then this piece, this is where I start getting messed up. 
is going to fold in this way, okay? And once you've got that folded in, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little adhesive to there and there, and that's just to keep that folded in like that. And then this piece is going to actually get folded up this way. And that's how you make your pocket card. So I hope that was not too hard, and you can actually go back and reverse it and watch it again. <laughs> when I was learning how to do this, <laughs> I had to watch it several times before I learned. Once I've done that, I'm going to take some of our tear and tape, and I'm going to add it to the ends like that. And then I'm going to take it all the way up my side of my card like that. And what I like about this tear and tape is that it's nice and sticky, and it will hold my pocket together. So if I load it up with something, or it's people are using it in and out, it's not gonna fall apart on them. They're gonna have a nice pocket. So there's my pocket. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the Melon Mambo ribbon, and I'm gonna just go ahead and do a little bowl around this just to spruce it up a little bit. So one of the ways that I measure ribbon is, um, if I'm doing a bow, I use four widths of whatever it is I'm tying the bow on. If I'm doing a knot, I just need three widths. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a bow. So one, two, three, four. And that will give you enough to go ahead and tie this bow around the front of your card. And like that, and you'll have enough to um, to tie it. Still have some nice looking tails coming down. So there you go. That's how I tie both. Fairly simple. Took me a few. It took me a few practices. So there's my pocket. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this birthday stamp that's in this stamp set. I'm going to ink it up with the basic black, and I'm just going to stamp it right down that angle. And there's the front of my pocket card. Now to do the inside of my pocket card, that just takes a little bit more work, but not much. I'm going to take a couple of pieces of cardstock. Let me put them out here. I've got a uh, so saffron piece that is four by five and a quarter. And that is so I will have a nice edge along the edge of my card. And then I just have, this is just a piece of Whisper White that I'm going to use to stamp on. And I'm going to cut that out with the labels. So it's your day. It's going to get stamped here. And just so you know, I'm using the stamp set Party with Cake. Lots of different um, stamps in there for lots of different birthdays. And then I'm going to take a little Melon Mambo and ink that up with the cake. And then I'm going to take some crushed curry. And I actually pulled these colors right from that designer series paper that we have. And I'm just going to put a couple of confettis around the cake. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little candle stamp that's in there, and I'm going to use a marker on this one, but I'm going to use the mint macaron, because that's another color that's in that paper pack, and the crushed curry, so I can ink up this little candle stamp, and I'm just going to cut, punch that down there, because I'm going to punch this out, and it's not going to show up. I mean, this is going to end up being a scrap. So once I've got that done, I've got this punch pack that we have available, and it's a cupcake and a balloon and that candle, and that candle coordinates perfectly with that little candle there, so I can punch that out. And then this piece, I'm actually going to use my labels, um, lots of labels die, and I'm going to cut that out with my big shot. So I will be right back. So I've got that piece cut and ready to go. As you can see, I just cut it into that shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and use our confetti embossing folder. I'm going to slide this piece of cardstock inside there. This is so saffron. And I'm going to run this through the Big Shot and give that a little texture. So once I've got that through there, you can see the texture that that gave that cardstock. I just love that look. And then I'm just going to put this piece together. This is just going to lay right on top as a layer on top of that embossed piece. And then my little candle. I'm just going to add to the top of my cake. And if I really want to make this a little bit more jazzy, I can take some of our Winkostella. And this is just like a clear glitter. And I'm just going to put a little clear glitter. You're probably not going to be able to see this on, on screen. But the recipient will. They'll be able to see that the, the flame is glittered. And then you can write on the back of here. And this just slides down right into your pocket. 
I will tell you the first time it takes a little doing just because it gets a little bit looser as you're growing. There we go. So you just slide that into your pocket. You can slide a gift card or something else inside there and you've got a great little birthday gift. Now this pack comes with like lots of different designer series papers so you'd have something for everybody's birthday. Here's what I was working on using the balloons. Um, but there's lots of different papers so I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't already done so you may want to sign up for my newsletter. I send out tips. Okay so that is um, my first project that I did. Uh, I really like these pocket cards. A couple of things I wanted you to know about because I just realized it as I was doing it, I looked it up. But these three little punches, this, um, the balloon and the candle and the cupcake, they're retiring. They're gonna be gone um, at the end of this month. And I didn't, I guess I didn't realize that. I just looked it up in the catalog. But so those three little punches, if you're interested, that was the one that I cut. They actually coordinate with this stamp set too. They have the cupcake and the balloon. But I used it in this, with this, Stamp set, and I used it with that little cupcake right there. So I just wanted to point that out. The other one was the lots of labels that I used to, to layer that on. Those are retiring too. So I don't know, just in case you're interested. Um, I had a couple of things that people asked. Oh, Teresa asked about the new catalogs. New catalogs will be going out, I'm assuming, next week. I actually had, am having Stampin' Up ship them out. You can see my project right here. What I'm working on here is I'm going to be sending out, and this is to those people who have ordered from me in the last year. Um, you will get a wish list, a sampling of the in colors. What else? Oh, and a, a bookmark with the in colors. So a sample of each cardstock color, and then a bookmark with the in colors, and a wish list. They're going to go out in these envelopes with a little note for me, and then know that. When you get that, your catalog should be coming shortly. So I'm hoping to put these out in the mail Monday, and I expect that your catalog should be coming any day now. Um, so that's exciting. But let's not forget, we got these other two catalogs that go to the end of the month, so I don't want you to miss out on something. I want to welcome my friend Ruth. She sent me an email to tell me she was watching. So hi, Ruth. Glad you made it. Um, as always, I give away some of the stuff that I have made. And I actually have those two cards here um, that I showed in that video. These are the cards, and it's just a really fun technique. And I have to laugh because I said something about every, we all have designer series paper. And Tanya just informed me that she's down to like two pieces in her stash. Now, who out there has two pieces of designer series paper besides Tanya? That doesn't make that's that's amazing actually you that means you've been stamping anyway she's holding out for some new stuff for the new catalog okay so i wrote down a little question for for the first two people that answer me correctly one on facebook on um, one on youtube at this point next one will go out to the website um the first person to tell me the two colors of the markers that i used in that video you'll each get one of these cards so on your mark it's set go i'm just going to be able to check as um while I'm showing this next video. I think I have a video of the Wink of Stella because I wanted to show you how it how it comes and how it works. I love Wink of Stella. You can do lots of stuff with it. It is uh oh there's a big there's a big picture sample of what I made. And then on well, the next page is going to be the actual products that I used. So these are the products that I used to make that card just so you're aware and these are live links if you needed to Click on them. I'll have these slides available afterwards too. Anyway, Wink Estella is great. You can use it for put glitter on. It's real simple. It's clean. It doesn't make a mess. They're also good for watercoloring with. Um, and people have just been having a lot of fun with them. So Wink Estella, here we go. The Wink of Stella glitter brush is perfect for adding just a wink of glitter to your projects. You can purchase the glitter brush in either gold or clear. Before you can use your glitter brush, you'll need to do a few things. This is what it looks like right out of the package. The first thing you need to do is remove the cap, unscrew the barrel, and remove this black ring. This ring has prevented the ink from being dispersed before you purchase it. So once that black ring is removed, then you just replace the barrel 
put the cap back on, and then you need to shake it just a few times. Next, you'll need to push the ink so that it comes down into the barrel here. So to do this, you're going to push right here where it says push. So you'll do this a few times, and that will draw the ink down into the barrel. Now this will take just a minute, so just keep watching. I've got one that I um, actually started yesterday, so let me show you what it looks like once the ink has come down. You can see the difference in the tips there. One has the uh, is clear here where the ink hasn't come down into the barrel, and then it's also got the silver there. So the Wink of Stella brush is easy to use. You just brush the color on whatever you want to add just a little bit of bling. So here's some DSP that I thought would be fun to add just a little wink of bling to. So you can see it's just like using a marker and coloring. Let me just move this around so you can see the sparkle. Now, if you're going to add a bit of bling to a stamped image, like the lamb here, you want to be sure that the image is either embossed or it's been stamped and either stays on or one of our archival inks in black or gray. If you use the glitter brush over the top of our classic inks, it will smear just a bit. But that's actually not a bad thing because that means that you could use the clear Wink of Stella glitter brush just like a blender pen. You'll just need to pull some ink into the lid of your classic ink. And I have an image here that I've stamped. And then I will just use the Wink of Stella brush just like a blender pen and just add that color right onto my image. And then you can see the sparkle that comes right out when you're using that Wink of Stella glitter brush. So you clean your brush just like you would any other blender pen. Just rub it back and forth until it runs clear. And you won't have any of the pink on the tip of the brush. So the Wink of Stella glitter brush is acid free and xylon free, so you can use them for any paper crafting project you are working on, even memory keeping. So when you are finished using the glitter brush, just replace the cap on top of it and make sure that you store it so the tip is up. And you'll know you'll have it the right way because you can see the name on the top of the brush right here. So if you want an easy way to add some bling to your projects, contact your demonstrator or visit us at stampinup.com to order your Wink of Stella glitter brush today. Okay, so that's the Wink of Stella. There's a, it, it does have a little learning curve to it. Um, and I've noticed some of the comments in there that people are saying, well, mine kind of looks globby. And it really just depends. Don't squeeze too hard or you will get, you'll get a glob. Um, but once it works, you're going to love it because it's just awesome. It just looks great on everything. I loved how she just did the designer series paper. That's kind of one of my favorite techniques. You can just take a plain piece of designer series paper and do the whole sheet and then chop it up and you've got, it's, it's just gives it that pizzazz. Um, Kimberly says she has a Wink of Stella brush, but I can't get the brush out of the cap. You know what I think the thing is, is that t tighten on the cap on the Wink of Stella, screw it on, and then don't, don't try to screw it up, just pull it off. So it's got two caps, so it's got the cap, in fact, I'll grab mine when we're watching the next video so that I can show you, Kimberly, what I'm talking about. I want to welcome Ray. This is the first time she's been here tonight, so thanks for coming. Glad you made it. I had a couple of things. Oh, um, somebody asked me, oh, I know, who won the pocket cards? <laughs> probably want to know. So Sonia Hanks and Melody Quinn were the two winners for the card. So what you two gals need to do, I actually think I have your email or your address, Melody, but if you will send me in either a Facebook message or an email, just send me your um, address and I will put those in the mail tomorrow um, to you. So enjoy. You'll have cards to either keep or cards to send to somebody else. Great. Do they have refills or do you just throw them away when it is empty? 
Well, they do not refill at this point. Um, throw them away? Probably not. Because what I would do is you could open them up and you could put some in there. Sometimes Some people have been putting a little bit of water in them when they dry out. And that gives you a... It just reactivates what's up against the sides. Um, and they're great, like I said, for, for painting with. So I, I'm not sure I'd throw them away because you could always use them for something else. Uh, looks like somebody got a white Winkastilla. They sent this out to me and a customer and it was supposed to be clear, but you love it. I didn't even know. I knew that some of the gold got mislabeled or the clear got mislabeled as gold or something. And so, but, um, anyway, that's awesome. I, I never even heard of white Winkastilla, but I bet it's, I bet it would be cool. Uh, let's see what else. You're welcome, Melody. And Maddie hasn't had any problems with the clear. Yeah, I haven't had any problems with my Winkastel either. I love it. Um, so somebody else, and I didn't write it down, darn it, asked me about the bundles in the new in the catalog. I will tell you that um, quite a few of the products in this, let's be careful what I grab here. Oh. <laughs> quite a few of the bundles in the occasions cat in the in this mini catalog. The bundles didn't make it into the new catalog, but some of the products did. Um, but they're not bundled in the new catalog. So you can buy them individually. So for instance, I'm just going to turn to a page. Let's see. I think these are both in the next catalog. But this page here, the stuff I'm using tonight with the with the framelits and then the stamp set, it's a bundle, and you save 15%. But in the next catalog, they're going to be available but individually. And so you won't save the 15%. So if you want them, anything that's in here that's bundled or in the big or big catalog that's available till the end of the month, get them now while they're 15% off. Um, in the next catalog, they're, they're not bundled. There are bundles in the next catalog um, of other products. And those bundles are going to be 10% off. So they have changed that a little bit. Um, but there's quite a few bundles, and you and you get and you get uh, ten percent. One of the things somebody asked me they they wanted to see the framelits. Okay, so these are my framelits. These are the pockets that they come in. This is the chipboard that came with it, and then I just put that radiator magnetic cover over right over that chipboard. Just chopped it down to be that size. And actually, you know how this tape that's on these chipboards are so it's so strong. I don't even add extra. I just slap that on top of that tape. And then these can either, you know, you could, they can go on here anyway, but then they stick. And then when they're in the envelope, ah, they're there. And I can see them. And they don't all fall to the bottom. I hope that makes sense to people. So, okay. Thanks for the pocket card. Yay, you won, Sonia. Yeah, Kimberly, don't screw it off. Pull it off. You only have to screw it off at the very beginning when you're putting it together. Yeah, Diana's not a real fan of glitter and glitz, but she loves the subtle hint of Winkastella, and that is the truth. It is so subtle. That's what I love about it. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of colors, I guess, of Winkastella. Uh, and there's recipes online if you want to refill it. And hello from Wisconsin. Okay, great. Okay, so let's get back to the workshop here. See where I am. Oh, Mace, Mace tutorial. This is Mace tutorial. That picture looks blurry to me. It must. It's either my. No, I think the picture is blurry. Anyway, Mace tutorial is a. Um, did I just change it? Yeah. Mace tutorial is five different cards using the Friendly Wishes cards collection. So these are five of the in colors. Um, I just, it was just kind of a fun way, one stamp set and the five in colors and you can do what you want. What I love about this tutorial is you don't have those products, you can use what you have. Use your designer series paper or a stamp set that you have and just follow the same pattern. I hope that makes sense. Um, this tutorial goes out to everybody who is in my virtual club and there's a link right there in that blue that's a link to join my virtual club. Or if you place um, a $40 order, with me, you get this tutorial sent to you. I have a new tutorial every month. 
So watch for those. And again, they can be used for lots of different things. Just a reminder that these are the five colors that are going out at the end of this month. These products will be gone. They may or may not show up down the road. Sometimes Stampin' Up! will do a color refresh and some of our old in colors will come back into our line. Um, I'm really hoping Blackberry Bliss comes back. I love that color. And of course, we'll have five new in colors with the new catalog. So I guess this would probably be a good time for me to show you the new five, the five new in colors. So I'll come back on screen. Okay, so the in colors that we have, and I have it actually in the full sheets of cardstock, so you can really see. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Emerald Envy. Oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have it in the. Okay, well now we're gonna open each one because the shine delight is shining on it. So this is Emerald Envy. It's a beautiful green color. Very good for St. Patrick's Day and Christmas. This color, sorry, I should have done this beforehand. I love this color. Dapper Denim. It's a beautiful blue. Ooh, I love this one. I love them all. You know, I wasn't sure at first. When I first saw them, I was like, oh, they're, they're good. I mean, I always like the colors, but... Um, they're really growing on me. Peekaboo Peach. It's a very pretty pre peachy color. And I like how they look together. <laughs> this is the cardstock that I'm actually going to chop up and put in my envelopes for everybody who gets a catalog from me. So you'll get a little sampling of each color. This color is... Flirty Flaming Flamingo, which that truly is a flamingo color. And then the last color is uh, Sweet Sugar Plum. A very nice looking purple. So those are our in colors for next year. I'll pull them all over here so you can see them all together. Ta-da! There's some great colors. And they really add to the to the line. I've noticed that they go well with lots of colors that are in the line. So I hope you like those. And when you get your catalog, you'll be able to see them. The other thing I was going to show tonight was this ribbon that we're getting. And it's called, uh, this is Peekaboo Peach. And this is the Roche, Roche ribbon. Oh, I have to find the camera. There we go. You can see it's got like a little crinkle to it. It's really, it's nice and flat, but it's got that texture to it. It's pretty. And that would be the... Um, Peekaboo Peach. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Peekaboo Peach. It takes me, it takes me a little bit to catch on to the colors, but I will, I promise. So there's your in colors for the next two years they'll be around. Okay, um, I'm gonna show this video because we're gonna be using these in the next screen, and I wanted you to see how they make a pop-up card. And I didn't use them to make a pop-up card this time. I did something different with them. So while the video is playing, I will be searching out for questions. Hi, everybody. I'm Andrea Withers. I'm from the training department here at Stampin' Up! And I want to talk to you about a fun addition to your birthday card making. Check out our party pop-up thinlets dice. These thinlets come with two dice, and they can be used to make a fun card element or they can make a really cute pop-up greeting in the inside of your card. These dies come in English, French, and German, so be sure to check with your local demonstrator for details on how to order. Let me show you how to use these. You do need to have your cards pre-cut and pre-scored. We recommend using the dies with our precision base plate because this will give you the best creases and the best cuts for this die. And you're going to use that with the multi-purpose platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our card base down. And on the dies, you'll notice these little arrows here. We're going to line those arrows up with our score line. And that way we know that we will be perfectly centered with our card and that we're going to get our pop-up exactly where we want it. Let's go ahead and run that through the big shot. 
And if it shifts around, just fix it before you send it through. Otherwise, you're going to have a really sad birthday card. Now, depending on your big shots, age, alignment, heavy usage, you may have to send it through a second time. So just play around with that. And then you're just going to peel this off. And there you have it. You might have to pop out a few little parts, but isn't that so cute? And then to get the pop-up part, you're just going to fold on all your score lines. There. And then you're going to fold on these score lines here. And you can play around with which way you want your pop-up to pop. But there you go. Hip, hip, hooray. We made a card today. Now, if you, you'll notice you've got these little pieces that may or may not still be inside your die. We have a handy little tool. It's the die brush. And if you need to get those out, you can just run this over it real quick and everything will come right out. So one more fun thing that you can do with these dies is that you can actually cut them out to make the element on the front of your card. And you'll just use some paper snips. And I actually, um, I sent this through the Big Shot without the score line so that I would have a nice, complete image. So just keep that in mind if this is something you want to do. And then you're just going to go along and trim this until you get it all the way out. Same thing with this one. You can just trim along this score line here. And again, that's um, you'll just get that fun little element you can put on the front of your card. You can do the inside of your cards, or you can have an inside like that one. This die pairs well with many of our birthday stamp sets, so don't miss out on using them to make all of your birthday creations and sharing with your loved ones just a little pop-up special of birthday love. Be sure to contact your local demonstrator today or visit our website to place your order. Okay, so that was um, how to use those dies. It's a pop-up die, and I'm actually making a card, another card with this die that is not a pop-up card. So somebody asked while well, that was playing, do they ever change the colors, the regular colors in the regular families? Yes, they do. Uh, every, about every five years, they do a color, what they call a color refresh, and that's when they'll re- do the color families and they'll bring in some of the old in colors that were a part of our line over the last five or six years and then and sometimes they get rid of others they have not done that this year they've stuck to the same um, colors in the color families and just brought in our new five in colors so um, that didn't happen this year so maybe next year we'll get a color refresh it's kind of fun um, it can be very stressful for people but I love it so I'm okay with it and you know it's okay um, Sonia loves new in colors, but I'm going to miss Blackberry Bliss, Mossy Meadow, Lost Lagoon, and Hello Honey. Uh, she hopes Stampin' Up! brings it back. Sonia, I will tell you that those were, those were some fabulous colors. Fall is like my favorite time of year anyway, and all four of those colors that you mentioned worked fabulous for fall. And I will not be surprised if in the next year or two, we don't see it. One of the, one or two of those colors come back. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so I think I answered the questions. Oh, cool. Got everybody answered. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. And then, um, not that one. That's the one I just played. This video. Hey, I don't know if you've noticed, but my son got me a new speaker for my video camera. So the last video that I played, it was kind of, screechy at first. I don't know what that was about, but hopefully this one will be better. Um, today was the first day that I used my new microphone, so hopefully I'll get it figured out and it'll work better. Here we go. Hi Stampers, Diane Damage here with DDStamps.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this card. It's one of those cards that's really packs a punch, but is a super easy card to make. 
Um, I used some of the It's My Party Designer Series paper for the background. And the stamp set that I'm using today is called Party with Cake. It's lots of different images for all kinds of birthdays. It goes great with that paper. And then I'm also using our Party Pop-Up Thinlets. And these are pop-up dies that make pop-up cards. And I will um, attach a video to this video, but I just wanted to do that. But I want to show you a different way to use them. So to begin with, I'm going to come in with some of, of my supplies here. And what I've got is a piece of crushed curry cardstock. This is eight and a half by eleven, scored at four, or eight and a, eight and a half by eleven, cut in half, scored at four and a quarter. So it ends up being uh, five and a half by eight and a half. And then I scored at four and a quarter, which just gives me your basic card size. And I picked these colors. Uh, because it's part of the paper pack and then the next piece I have is going to go on the inside of my card And this is actually four by five and a quarter and so that's going to layer in there and, and have a nice border around the edge And I cut the designer series paper No, I have two different si kinds of paper because it's two-sided paper So I can pick which side I want the most and this too is four by five and a quarter because I want to leave that border so I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive to this and attach this to the front of my card base so you can see how I get that border. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to go ahead and use some of the stamps in that stamp set. Um, I'm going to use It's Time to Celebrate with Cake. Oh. And I'm going to ink this up and stamp that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my markers and just go ahead and color in my words. Once I have that done, that's just going to go right on the inside of my card. And you can see there where I get that border. So once I've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my um, big shot and that die. Put this up here. Now what I'm using here is I'm actually using my steel plate for my big shot. That steel plate works great for these dies that um, are real detailed. And if you need a lot of, so it really, it really cuts them really cleanly. Once I've done that, I'm going to add my plate to the top. Oh, except you know, you know what? I messed up here. Oh no, that's right. Excuse me. That steel plate works as one of your clear plates. And then you run it through. And these detailed dies, I actually like to run through twice. Just to get that extra cut. And once you've got that cut, what you can use is we have this great little dye brush. And if I lay that on there and then take my little brush, that's going to pop out most of those little pieces of paper in that dye. And leave them in there so I can pull this out. You can see how clean that is that way. And then all the most of the, not all of them, but most of the extra pieces are left inside that foam pad. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you here, because this is a pop-up card, it doesn't cut your edges. But I'm going to go ahead and take a scissor, and you can actually see the line, because that's a score line. So if you were doing a pop-up card, that would be where you would fold it on that score line. This time, you're just going to trim it on that score line on both sides. And then you've got this great little piece of a die that you can go ahead and attach. So what I did is I actually took uh, some <laughs> dimensionals. My stamp room is becoming a huge mess right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some dimensionals around on the edges so that it doesn't really show through. And then I'm going to pull off these little pieces of paper. And 
and attach that to the front of my card base. And by putting that on dimensionals, it really makes those, those um, words pop. And then I'm going to go ahead and use some of Baker's twine. And this was a double pack that Stampin' Up! had in the Occasions mini catalog that coordinates so great with this paper. So I'm just going to take some of the Baker's twine and I'm going to make a quick bow and trim it with my scissors. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of snail. You could use a glue dot. Any of that will work. And then just give that a little um, pop. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece. This is just a scrap of um, whis or Whisper White and some black ink. And I'm going to go ahead and ink this stamp up that says Let's Party. And I'm going to just go ahead and stamp that onto that piece of scrap. Trim that edge and make this edge a little banner. And that's going to get put right on this card, like that. Anyway, a real quick, easy card using those um, pop-up dies in just a different way. So, you know, think of all your supplies as you can do a little bit something. You can do a little something different with them. So, if you haven't already done, okay. So that's card number two, um, or that I made. I've had other videos in there. Anyway, I do have two of those, too, that I made. Um, the insides are a little bit different. This is the one that I made at my workshop the other night. That was the inside. And then this was the inside that I made on the video that I you just watched. So I'm going to give these two away. And these are actually going, I've got, um, to somebody on my website and to somebody on Facebook. And I kind of divided that up because I have a lot more people on Facebook than I do on either my YouTube channel or my typepad, so or my website. So I kind of just split it up. And I figured this is the easiest way. Otherwise, it always seems like everybody on Facebook wins. So this this helps. Um, so what I'm going to say is, hey, it's got this group chat thing going. Can you guys see that? I've never seen that before. I logged into Google Hangouts tonight, and everything was different. And of course, I didn't really log in earlier. I just logged in about the normal time, about quarter two, to start setting it up. And I had a little panic attack, because I didn't know how I was going to get things going. I hadn't realized that it upgraded. It seems to me like I haven't done one of these. It felt like forever, but it's really, it's only been a month. It hasn't. But there's been so much that has happened in that month. My life has been a little bit crazy. Um, and continues to be, but my daughter is in Chicago and is having the time of her life. Oh, I should have posted a picture of her puppy because every 25 year old needs a brand new puppy when they start a brand new job in Chicago. No, it's all right. It's good for her to have something to come home to that absolutely she adores and the puppy adores her. So that is good. Um, next week I go to the Mediterranean with Stampin' Up. It's a cruise that I earned last year. And I'm taking my sister, so I'm excited about that. My husband wouldn't go. He, he, um, he, he can't swim, so he doesn't want to take a cruise. Which I say, well, you know, you don't have to jump off. But anyway, so my sisters are lucky because they get to go with me on the cruise when it's a cruise um, trip. So let's let's give away these cards. I'm gonna just say this is the stamp set that I used. First person to name it, put the name of the stamp set up. I will mail these cards to you. So there, that's kind of a hard one. Um, anyway, and then so we have just a couple weeks left of the of this um, occasions catalog and the catalog that the the current catalog, and then we get the new one. So this is the card hip hip hooray that I made. This is a real big huge shot of it, and I'm going to assume that people have probably already answered. Yep, it looks like Buffy is a winner. And Lisa, you got a couple of your letters mixed up, but you have all the right letters. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. That's funny. Um, so Buffy and Lisa. Okay, let's see. 
These are the products that I used to make that card. As you can see, it was Party with Cake. Um, lots of good stuff there. Wanted to remind you that there in the in the online shopping, there is a retirement list, and things are starting to um, be sold out. I know that the teacup framelits are sold out um, out of the occasions catalog. That was probably the first thing to go. Stamp sets, they will continue to produce until the 21st is my understanding. And then after that, stamp sets will start um, not being available. So if there's anything that you want in that other catalog, now would be the time to get it. These are the bundles that are 15% off. And I had explained that earlier that bundles in this occasions catalog that are current right now are 15% off. But when they bump up to the next catalog, if they're going to be in the next catalog, they're in there not as bundles, so they're separated. So like the Bloom and Love photopolymer bundle, I know those two items are in the new catalog. The framelits, or the thinlets, and the stamp sets are separate. Um, somebody had asked me about the bundles being in the new catalog. Bundles are in the new catalog. They're at 10% off, as opposed to... <laughs> That's okay, Lisa. She just posted up there, fat finger. Yeah, I, I get it. At least you had the right letters. I knew what you meant. So congratulations. Um, so there is going to be a special in the next, till Sunday night, May 15th. I will be, you, if you use this code, you will get a free goodie bag from me. And if your order happens to be over $75, Using this code, I will also give you your choice of one of the host sets in the current catalog. Um, and I'll just send you an email to get that information from you. So if you decide to place an order for $150, don't use the code. Go ahead and place the order, take your freebies, and then contact me, or I'll send you an email and asking you about which host, host set you would like. And you'll also get the packet from me of goodies. So yeah, there's lots to be had. Um, don't forget to use the the code and I actually put the code I believe it's everywhere I believe I put it on my on my website on YouTube and on Facebook but you can always contact me and find out if you don't have it uh, door prize time so go ahead if you are on oh you know what I did want to show quickly I see it's easier on face on, on this new Google hangout now to jump around on websites if you are going to place an order tonight I'm gonna pop into the website Go on to the store, pick something I want to buy, put it in my cart. And right here, I can either continue shopping or I can view my shopping bag. This is where you put your hostess code, right inside here. You put the number in there and then you hit apply. And then that attaches it. And then I know exactly who has the. Um, who's getting the free bundles of little products that I do. So um, I'm gonna pop on here. I have a, the cover of the catalog. I can't show the whole catalog. It's against policy, but I can show you the cover. This is a new cover for the new catalog. I'll just let you look at it for a while. It's a beauty. <laughs> Don't those colors beautiful right there? Beautiful. Okay, so that's the new catalog. They are going out in the next week or so. And if you are have shopped with me before, you will get one. If you have not and you want one, just send me an email and let me know what your address is and I will get one out to you. Um, oh, Lorena said that they didn't bring back the color coach. Yeah, that's a bummer. Is there any coffee sets in the new catalog? I don't think there are. I don't have it memorized. I really don't. But I, I don't know. I don't think they are. But that tea set, the stamp set is still available. It's just the framelits that aren't. Uh, Heather noticed that the nice cup of paper is on back for it. Will it be back in stock or would it be best not to order it? It is on back order. And it, according to Stampin' Up, it is going to be back in stock. They usually don't let you order anything that they're not going to be able to get back in stock before the end of the time. So if you want the nice cup of paper, I would say order it. It may take a bit to get to you. I can actually... No, I don't think I can find out. I can't get online when I can't get back in my thing when I'm online. I don't think just because I, I can't show it to you guys, but um, 
Okay, well, does anybody have any more questions? We're gonna get the door price slip done. We're gonna get the questions answered. Still seeing the gone, going on screenshot. Did not see the new cover. Oh, sorry. New cover. Ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> Like I said, catalogs will be going out um, in the next week or week and a half. I don't know, week. I'm hoping y'all will see them by next week. I was just peeking to see if anybody on the... Uh, oh, yeah, I got a couple questions on my type pad here. Oh, Carol, well, you're welcome. She said I had a nice video. Perfect. Okay. So, the winner of the door prize is, as I have to search for it. So, what I do beforehand is I pick a number, and the number, tonight's winning number was number 42. Everybody fills out their door prize slip. It all goes into a pot, into a spreadsheet, populates the spreadsheet as people sign up for the door prize. And whoever happens to be on the number that it's number 42 looks like ginger it just has ginger's first name it doesn't have a last name it's j or g k r a b b e n o h o f t at comcast.net ginger you are the winner you will need to send me a um your address and i will send out a stamp set Ta -da! look at this one um as your door prize tonight. Remember that if you place a order with me and you use the hostess code, I do bundle those all together and then I split up the hostess benefits amongst everybody that places an order. Um, if your order is over $75, I will send you an email and get you one of the hostess sets in, in the current catalog. So that's just a freebie I'm offering this month because it's the last month of the catalog. The, Current catalog and the occasions catalog and the last day of this month and then the new catalog starts June 1st. So make sure if there's anything in there you want. If you do have the in colors that are retiring, make sure that you get ink refills. I know that they are still available at this time, which is almost unheard of that they're still available because usually they all sell out. But I think that people have, I've been really pounding the pavement about get your refills, get your refills, get your refills. So if you haven't, get your refills. Uh, Lisa waited too long for the craft scissors. I know, I can't believe they got rid of those. I love those. I'm glad I have a pair. Lots of labels, thinlets are available in the new catalog too. Really? I thought that they were not in there. Well, that's great. I'm quick looking here. Oh yeah, they are. Lots of labels, thin framelits are in there. Oh good. That's always a nice feeling. Thank you, Susan, for helping me out there. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? If not, I'm going to say good night. Thank you. You can always feel free to, to email me or message me on Facebook if you have any questions. I'm more than willing to, to answer you. I will be back. I'll be gone next week on the Mediterranean. I will be back after that. And then we will hit the new year off with the new catalog. Um, and probably, oh, <coughs> excuse me. And a fun workshop. I probably will do a workshop June 1st in celebrating the new catalog. So watch for that. And uh, I thank you and have a great night. Goodbye.